What's up? This is HG News Tech. So, uh, I did change my channel name because, um, um, I had reasons because of the, you know, my parents, uh, to remove my names, and, uh, that's why you're seeing the channel name change to something that may be better off for me for the channel because I do like tech, and I'm better at tech, it seems like. When it comes to, compared to talking about, you know, politics or news, that I'm more focused on tech and knowing more and more educated with all these other Linus Tech Tech videos over the years, as well as Linux environments installing in the past on my first HP computer, which was. I think it was my first HP computer because it was it was AMD. If I go that route and I get AMD, I think this year if I can, I gotta put off a couple hundred wherever you know wherever I save up money, of course. But you know how it is. AMD be the cheapest route, I believe. I think I could get a computer for like a thousand, a little over a thousand. Things like thirteen hundred dollars, but then you have taxes and then. The warranty I definitely want from Best Buy because if something happens and sure I'll have DR4, I'm going to have to get one with enough of a graphic card and have, I think the three-year warranty is kind of expensive, but, you know, it might be worth it. I mean, most of those products will probably have a warranty, but I'm not an expert, but, you know, since I'm in the field of, you know... I'm not going to say where I work, but um, warranties are really important if a device stops working or something just out of the blue just stops working completely or something you know, goes wrong, basically. And uh, those are those are usually, they have, I think they got two warranties. I think they got one, like, Ascent thing or whatever. Um, this is a Linux distro that I knew since I was... In school, this is probably about 2006, uh, 7, 8, something like that. And back then, the size of the ISOs were really small. If you actually contacted them, like my father did, and they would basically send you a free copy, a couple of them, you know, to, to try, basically, of the full versions of the Linux distro. And now they don't do that. You usually have to download it, which you can always burn it to a DVR. You know, and even the newer computers these days, they got like Apple, and which I hate because they don't have a disk drive. And uh, thankfully, I do have a DVR external USB drive if I need to burn an image or I can use a USB to do the Linux or I can use a virtual machine inside of the Windows environment. Which would be a safer idea. And uh, it separates both environments. It's It's got its own virtual thing itself. It's all contained in that file. And there's no risk. I mean, Linux is more stable than Mac OS for sure. Because it's been out for a little bit longer in some ways. It's not actually uh, free as you think. It was actually made by someone who actually wrote the kernel. I forgot who the person was. But... If you know the person, let me know in the comments because I read about it on YouTube lately. And he does approve other areas of companies who sell Linux distro, which one company is Zoron. It's, it's the OS, you know. They got all kinds of like Linux Mint and different versions. This is the one that I actually tried on my AMD HP computer. It was one of those Windows Vista. Horrible OS. It, everyone wasn't ready for Vista at the point at that time. And um, it did crash a lot. But Avanti did a far better job, I think, in resources. And back then, you, you could just... I mean, I don't think Vista could boot into Linux. But we were able to do it on a Windows XP install on a different machine. And then just boot into the Linux from the Windows side. Being inside the Windows environment, of course, and then double clicking on the icon. 
somewhere in the system files and it would launch the whole entire environment of Linux in a virtual machine kind of state. Similar to what VirtualBox would do if you downloaded it or the EMBI or Parallels for Mac or whatever. It's virtualized onto a separate hard drive, like a, like a little file, and you, you can expand it how many gigabytes you need. They don't recommend gaming for this kind of environment, but for a YouTuber in, uh, reviewing Linux distros, I think it'd be fine. And they, that's what a lot of them do. They don't. I mean, I would do the same route and just say, hey, why would you just reboot and risk yourself? deleting files on your hard drive. I mean, hardware has got so much better since Ubuntu came out. And they're even having drivers built into the newer OS. And I think they're working on the next OS of this version will come out in April, which will be Ubuntu 20, you know, wherever it is. And I think each of them got like 18 months until they're where you had to upgrade, you know, free support. And after so many months, you don't you get to start paying for you know updates in the past. I heard I remember in the past, but you could always install it a new version. It doesn't matter. I mean, there's all kinds of Linux discros, and a lot of people are going away from Ubuntu because <laughs> it's not like it used to be. I remember when they had Unity, and it was so simple. I mean, it was like, man. Perfect, but then they went to their old-fashioned ways, and um, all this new hardware. The copies in the past I downloaded in the early years, like probably about five more years ago or so. Excuse me, would not work on newer hardware. So any you know, other Linux I downloaded that was about five years old probably won't work with new. With new AMD hardware as it is, you know, just download a new copy. That's it. I mean, just it's simple. And either you can you can also ask. I think so. You can download and then it's like three, four gigabytes. So if you have a daily limit, just you can always order a DVD or a USB drive. They got them on Amazon. They got them on different sites. Um, even here, probably well, they have. They also have versions of Linux that are like Windows or Mac OS where they have those docs and transparency and Vista did bring transparency and to different devices because it started in Vista and then other devices started taking it and using it into like, you know, now the iPhone has transparency, the Mac has transparency effects. As well as Windows still has it in a way, but you can't. It's harder to notice. It's a little older. It's newer, modern style. And I remember when I had the gadgets on the Windows Vista and Seven side, and Seven was just perfect. And uh, last month they actually discontinued Windows Seven on the fourteenth of January, and I mean, there's no updates going tor towards it. So if you had a copy of Windows Seven, I suggest upgrading. If you can to Windows, at least Windows 8 or 10, because um, if you get one of those malware attacks or those ransomwares, and thankfully my Mac has not gone that hasn't got that issue, but I don't click links on my Gmail or you know email at all, because even if I get text messages, I think is you know fishy. I don't answer them. I just slide the thing, delete them, uh, because you don't want to take a risk. And that's how a lot of the Windows machines are begin. Uh, hacked and um, as long as you, if you run Linux and you don't install the the Win Loader, that means like it's a Windows environment. It's called you know I think it was called it's called Wine, and it's a Windows emulator for the Ubuntu Linux or different Linuxes. If you install that and you click on one of those malware links, it will launch the virus. And I've seen it on YouTube channels, like tech, you know, these really high end security channels who teach and show how effective anti uh, virus software is. And then, you know, showing that this is possible on Linux, 
and I believe because it runs Linux the product um, Linux I mean Windows uh, X you know X you know I mean like that launch you know it launches the files basically that exe file section it's just, it's just easy to do it and that's all it takes and it doesn't matter how the desktop is once it launches and it's in the system it's game over your files will start being encrypted as well as different things and um it's something to look forward to to stay aware of as well that i don't want any of that <laughs> at all and i do keep backups of this machine, it will back up without me doing nothing while I'm at work, so I don't have to worry. And I will definitely have another backup for the Windows machine, uh, and definitely a good antivirus because some of those you gotta watch. And I'm thinking maybe I'll get like a a graphic card that's a Nvidia that's got like eight gigabytes of RAM, a real memory built into it, as well as you know eight cores. Seeing these cheap, I mean, Intel might be efficient, but for the price point, if I need one with 32 gigs of RAM, it's going to cost me at least $1,800 from Best Buy to have i7 with eight cores in them. You know, all the special specs you need. And um, some of those I buy powers, you got to watch the reviews of all these different devices because you could get a device that could stop working and I did a look at um, the reviews of one iBuyer Power Snowblind and I think it was the, it was the i7 model and that one had a display issue on that side panel where you have that LED transparent side panel where it shows the graphics like Intel, the Vita, and, you know, iBuyer Power your temperature, your RAM usage, your CPU usage to that transparent like, side panel that shows all your hardware inside. Uh, apparently, from my, from the reviews I've been reading, that dies within three months of like 3% of the cases or more. And other things would happen as well after three months. And uh, just watch out because it seems like both of those are kind of possibility. They're probably not the best idea to buy. Because I expect that it looked like a good deal, but then you look at the reviews, and there was, I think it was more than, than the display itself wrong with it. I think you had a couple other things that were messing up after three months. And I think a couple of them went through three of those computers in, in a row. And um, that it's like the Xbox 360 when it came out, and it was overheating and red ringing to death and three light red lights and I waited until later in high school to get one that was more cooler running more efficient and it still works to today as well I only went through one because it overheated on me and it was probably dust but this one has gone solid since and never has gave up never did the original power supply did go out but I had another one so I'm taken care of until that one goes out and then the console is useless. But that's about the Xbox, you know, the current gen I got. I don't like the power bricks, I know. But that's what they're for. I mean, they didn't think about it when they were designing the Xbox 360. They crammed all that hardware in there. It was hard to breathe for all that air. And a lot of them did overheat. And some of the updates, I think, they, I think it was like the 2008... Uh, dashboard update did had trouble. I did have some trouble with some consoles, and they did have updates prior to that that break consoles. And um, Sony's not out of the woods on that either for the PS3. And I know for some a lot of PS4s eventually died. Mine did not. Neither of them are dead. They're still working, even my Pro. But it gets loud. The wish I'm one get loud like you can't believe like a gen engine for the PS4 and um, barely playing. I mean it's those will probably eventually die because they're really, you know, it's easy for dust to get in there, including the IMAX. They're really outdated, and I don't really want to keep going on this path of Apple 
of having them because they've been known online tips to show them that the film they're slowing down and not running at appetite speed because they're overheating. So the processors had to knock themselves down to keep the system stable and cool, and that's just not tolerated. You respect to have a machine for the specs you pay for. And um, they installed Windows. They looked at the graph, and uh, I think it's like Windows 10. But, mm. yeah, it, it, and a lot of them underperformed. Some of those Mac models lately have been having trouble. And even if you buy a new Mac these days, I heard, with that T2 chip in there, if you change out the storage in the machine, even if it's a Mac Pro, like the 20, the, the latest one that came out, that's like over five, $6,000. And there's a lot of YouTubers that spend forty grand or more on these things. And um, not even, no one can actually take out that solid state storage or those hard drives they can figure with Apple. Because if you do that, the system locks itself up with that security chip until you have to go to an Apple store or an authorized store to undo that action that the machine locks itself down. It's got really tight security. They've been getting locking down they've been locking down on people fixing their devices over the years and it's just not right. I mean iPhone eight uh, works fine, but uh I know they've been trying to uh, make it harder for people to upgrade their phones or at least try to replace some parts. And some updates in the past did break the break those phones. Always heard of, so. Thankfully, I took care of my phone, my last one I had, as well as this one, and not cracking it with, with a good uh, protector on the screen. You know, I got that outer box, so if I drop it, it doesn't crack. It's worth the seventy sixty or sixty dollars worth. Definitely, because it's really handy when something just drop and your hands just are slick and just can't hold the phone. You know, we have all that. We had that before a lot, you know. Some people have that, you know, it's just how it is. And it's just handy to have something like that in your hands that's around your phone protected. So, and I always, I never had a scratch, I don't think, on that thing or a crack. So, on the last one too, but... Pretty good condition, I can tell you one thing, but the, the, the whole entire hardware was getting at the age where the software was more newer and the hardware could not keep up and the battery was going in a different direction. The health wasn't good on it. It was losing power from it, health, and uh, it was just time for an upgrade. And uh, it took a while, but it did go in and I, did, I was able to transfer a lot of my things. I had to download a lot of other things, but that's all I that's all I had to do, and I do miss the headphone jack. In the, in the since I had the iPhone six, I remember always having a headphone jack. Now I gotta bring the adapter every time with a power cable, just in case the thing starts dying more. So that's the thing about Apple is you gotta do all your things. Now there's some kind of um, I think the EU is trying to ban the Lightning port, which like I saw on my state test, which is oh my god. Oh, come on, they don't know nothing about technology, and that that would just be horrible. You know, walk into a store, and then you can't buy the cable for the phone you actually have or your device, because a lot of the new Macs, believe it or not, they don't have batteries. They have them built in with the lightning cable connector, as I know with the new iMacs, and watching them unbox them on YouTube. Um, they can't even use the keyboards and mouse while they're dead charging so that is a downside <laughs> that's something I don't want to deal with I say <laughs> even the new Mac Pro I think the display is only at USB 2.0 but um, that's only because a limitation in the bandwidth for the you know for the one cable for the four, for the five 6k displays because they need to conserve some of that you know bandwidth and those cables with Mac Pro there's only so much of that they can handle at one time they can deal with it and the Mac Pro is definitely not going to handle a display with USB 3.0 I don't know why they can't but I guess they can't do it but I don't know even Apple can't explain why their machines are having trouble and that's what I'm seeing a lot of lately 
even MacBooks I've been seeing on that one YouTube channel that is repairing these iPhones and these MacBooks, where their uh, processors from their Intel chips start frying so hot that they actually stop working and they get desoldered from the board itself. And that's just not, that's just not right. You know, sell a product and then it overheat and just break on you. I mean, why, Apple? Why would you do that? I mean, this thing is slow enough as it is doing this YouTube channel. But to see newer devices even fail and not be able to fix them is not acceptable by no means. And they're trying to push this new, like, right to repair, which I think is like, a really good thing. Because uh, Apple needs to stop doing this nonsense. They're going to lose customers before they know it. And I, them inner socks might, might show it right now, if I know correctly. And um, I may not buy another Mac again. <laughs> it's the kind of thing I don't want to deal with. And even if all my passwords are on the thing, but... I could easily just transfer one by one, but it might take a while, but, you know, it'd be worth it. Having a machine that can boot into a SSD format, I mean, where it can boot instantly. And all the Macs only have, what, uh, for the default for a Fusion Drive, which does horrible, I heard, for 4K editing, as well as a lot of video editing. And their SSDs have been known to go out in their MacBooks after, like, four years lately. And that's just a disappointment. And I would not spend a thousand dollars on the SSD for a Mac for iMac with their charging right now. Even with the Mac Pro, if you want a Mac that ran out for a terabyte and a half, it's like twenty five thousand dollars you have to pay Apple. And my say tips say don't pay them. I believe it because it's a waste of money. Even with the newest twenty seven inch iMac, if you want to upgrade that RAM to sixty four gigs, you got to pay a thousand bucks. For that price, you can buy 128 gigs and it's been tested to run on that model without trouble. With the right specs, and it just boots fine perfectly. Um, and it's on a lot of YouTuber channels showing the proof of it that it can go, it can go higher than Apple lists the RAM capacity to. It can handle more. And, um, I mean, it's getting cheaper now for RAM. It's apparently going down more. I mean, a couple hundred dollars might get me 64 gigs of RAM running out of 32 gigs. But that, which is worth it, you know, compared to paying, God, $25,000 in RAM. <laughs> and um, if I was going to spec out the Mic Pro for the 32 gigs of video card, which they have a video card that's like AMD, that's uh, 32 gigs of, per card. And that's like, even after the burner card, like $2,000, like. For the add-on. Now they even have their rack version of theirs. And it's like. <laughs> I don't know. I, it's just a waste of $6,000. And you only get like how many gigabytes. Of RAM. In an 8-core processor. Um, yeah. I miss when Steve Jobs was the <laughs> CEO of the company. Who really ran their company better than they are right now at the moment. They need to innovate more and do just make their products better. Purely better. It's more stable and more reliable for sure. It's cheaper, but everyone's catching up to it. You know, like no one wants to pay you like what they're paying. I'm done with them probably. <laughs> but uh, for iPhones, probably not. But, um, uh, I don't know. It, it might be AMD custom built for sure. That's what, something I really want for the last 10, 15 years is the custom built computer for my buy power or some other company do I can buy it for Best Buy or so and afford it, of course. But, uh, yeah, I used to have a custom, couple custom ones in the past and that was before Vista, by the way. So it was really old tech. wasn't new. and It's not near what it is today for sure. Like, I only had, like, four gigs of RAM I could put in the thing. And that was, like, DDR1. It's like, that's, you can't even find that online anymore. It's so outdated. Um, and they're even talking about DR5 coming out. And that'll, drop, that'll, that'll force the other DR4 to go down in pricing. And, I mean, in the next couple of months, there's going to be a newer hardware. They'll push the old hardware that's currently out 
to a cheaper price point where we can afford it more, basically. So they, that's what they always tell us on YouTube. A lot of those big famous YouTubers just wait. When they release those, they got, they got to knock the rest of theirs out. I guess they got to get rid of it all to make room for their newer hardware. You know? If you like this channel, subscribe to my channel, HD News Tech. And I'll see you later.